Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're gonna make delicious smoked salmon. I'm here at Sullivan University again today with Chef Bell, and Chef Bell actually teaches me four days out of the week how to cook. And so you guys are privileged to learn from him because he knows so much more about cooking than I do. So Chef, what do we have to do to this thing to get it ready to go on the smoker? Well, it's pretty much already there. We bought fillets, right? right. But instead of buying a whole salmon, we mm -hmm. just bought fillets. And they come in already scaled, so the scales are already off the back side okay. of the skin, so we want to get rid of those. If you have a fresh salmon that's whole, you need to scale it, right? Um, take the scales off the back side of the skin. We're just going to kind of take some of the excess parts off of here that we don't really need or don't eat well. This is where the back fin was, right, the dorsal fin. If there's parts of the other fins down here or up here, we go ahead and take those out too. Got it. And then we're going to trim the belly fat here, so because the belly fat is what we would make Nova locks out of, or locks, um, that's where it comes from. Like this bagels and locks. Bagels and locks, yeah. It was originally from urban legend that that was the cheap cut of salmon that was left over after doing a really nice cured cold smoked salmon. Humans have been smoking fish for thousands of years. So we're going to take this off, we're just going to get rid of it, right? Okay. And then we're going to kind of section these out so that they're like two and a half pounds, two pounds, somewhere around in there, maybe three. Okay. So why the sections? Um, the thickness of the filet, uh -huh. right? This is really thick here, mm -hmm. and we're really thin here. Now you could cure the whole filet, not a big deal, but you're gonna find that when you do, this gets a little over cured, and this a little under cured. It's gonna be better right here. That's gonna, might be the sweet spot, so to speak. Right. Um, or you leave it in the cure so long that this gets done completely, it's nice and beautiful, and then this is kind of really dry because um, it's just over dried. You know, the, the salt pulls the, the moisture out of the meat, so. Um, and then what we're going to do is just kind of take this off. That's part of the, the fin also. We'll just get rid of this. And then we're going to trim this. Like I said, we're going to trim this belly fat. We want to check to make sure that we've got all the pin bones out. So if you push, and they did this for us, um, if you push backwards towards the back and up, if there's any pin bones in there, right along this line down to about here, they'll pop up. Right. And then you just pair of pliers, new nose pliers or something like that, pull them out. But now we're just going to kind of take this belly off here pull that off we're going to reserve that that's going to get cured and i do line this with plastic wrap the pan that i use it just makes me feel safer right <laughs> so it's non-reactive got yeah. it so now we're going to cut this into like sections that we can use of so about equal size Is about that equal size yeah okay. and then here there we go we'll put this one in here Okay. And we're going to do just a basic cure that I use to cure just about any fish for hot smoking or cold smoking. So why do we cure the fish? We cure the fish to prevent bacterial growth. Mm -hmm. um, it reduces the amount of water activity in the product okay. um, so the bacteria won't grow. Right? Got it. The things you're worried about in a smoker is botulism. Right. Things you're worried about with cold smoked, cold products or cold smoked products in fish especially is listeria, okay, um, which are pretty dangerous bacteria. We're going to cure these with beet, okay, which is a Russian style, um, beet and vodka. Um, okay. And we'll pull that out. But this is just a 50-50 mixture of kosher salt and light brown sugar. Okay. Um, so if you use a pound of salt, you use a pound of light brown sugar. Okay. And it makes really good mix to cure just about any fish. We're going to cover the salmon. I usually put just a little bit right on the plastic wrap. It just kind of helps okay. to start the skin. So you want, you want the skin to be dry at the end? Yeah. The skin's going to be leathery. Leathery. Kind of, yeah, because okay. it's going to pull all the moisture out of it. It's going to be leathery. It's not really dry. Um, okay. It does dry some because it does pull moisture out of it, but it's pretty fatty too. So okay. you're going to find that it's, it seems to be really nice and moist just because of the fat that's in it. And we're just, we pack this in here, right? I think the... Locks that's made commercially doesn't have quite the concentration of sugar. I see. Uh, it's going to be a little saltier. The we put the plastic wrap on here, again, to protect the fish from corrosion, okay, from the pan. Got okay? it. And we're going to put a pan on top of this, mm -hmm. on top of that plastic, and then we're going to set a weight on there. Now, you can use bricks if you want to, right, whatever, but I found the easiest and convenient thing for me is to use water. Smart. I put <laughs> water, water in Ziploc bags. And so why the weight? The weight's going to compress the protein and the fat together. I'm sure you've had prosciutto. Yeah. Okay, prosciutto versus a country ham. 
Okay. The texture is different. Oh, you know, okay. In a prosciutto, the texture is more buttery. Yeah. Um, a country ham is not quite as buttery. I you see. Know, it's, it's not, so those fibers aren't pressed together. The Got fiber, it. When you press those things together, they become buttery and creamy and, and slice better and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. So, so yeah. better. So, yeah, it makes, makes a much better texture. Okay. Um, so, but this is, you know, a gallon, eight pounds per gallon. So I know exactly about how much I've got. I got, you know, four or five pounds here, four or five pounds here. That's going to be 10 pounds about. Okay. And then that'll be plenty of weight to be sure. able to compress that. Now, this is going to go in the refrigerator. Okay. okay. And it has to cure in the refrigerator. You can't let it sit out at room temp. Um, <laughs> not good. This fillet is going to take anywhere sure. from 36 hours to 48 hours. Got it. Just kind of depending on how that thickness and how much the salt actually takes really well. So. Right, cool. and at that point you can cold smoke or hot smoke it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's once it's cured, mm -hmm. you you can actually just slice it right off and eat it. I really? Mean, it's, yeah, it's really good like that too. Really? Wow. Know? So then you could cold smoke it, you could hot smoke it, and go there because that just adds another dimension of, of flavor to it. Ah, you know? okay. So the smoke, you know, a lot of people like that cold smoked salmon. Yeah. You know? so we're okay. Gonna set this off to the side, put that in the refrigerator, and 36 to 48 hours it'll be ready to come out. The fillets themselves, generally what I do is I, I rinse them when they're a 50-50 blend of sugar and salt. Mm -hmm. I'll rinse the fillet off and then I'll soak it in cold water, just put it in cold water to cover okay. um, for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. It just kind of leaches that excess salt out of the outside of it right. and makes it taste better. So, Okay, cool. great. What are we going to do with these two fillets? What kind of brine are we going to use here? This is going to be what we call a Russian style. Okay. Um, this is, I don't, I don't know why it's called Russia, except it's got beets in it and vodka. So, beets and vodka. <laughs> there you go. To me, that says Russia. Right. So, and what we've got in the cure is we've got sea salt, fine sea salt. We've okay. got orange zest, lemon zest, um, sugar, our herb blend, or our spice blend, which is white peppercorns, coriander seeds, yep. and then juniper berries. This cure uses such a small amount of salt that we have to have what's called pink salt, right? Um, which is sodium nitrite. Um, prog curing powder salt, number one. Prog powder number one, right, Instacure okay. number one. But it's all the same. It's 94% sodium chloride mm -hmm. and 6% sodium nitrite. Right. And that sodium nitrite prevents bacterial growth. Okay. So you're, you're not going to have botulism growth. You're not going to have listeria growth. You're not going to have any other type of bacterial growth because of that nitrite. Right. Um, so if you decide to cold smoke it, that would be really important. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got cold it. smoking would be really important. Uh, so in hot smoking, even with meats, yeah. you know, if you're hot smoking meats, then sometimes you're going to want to use a cure of some sort to prevent that in your smoker sometimes. Okay. So I see. If you're low temp smoking. Got it. This is kind of all the, the base stuff. And then we have um, our orange juice, right? We're just going to take an orange and squeeze that over the filet, hmm. right? That one and this one. Now this is going to produce a lot of liquid. You're going right. to find that the liquid in the bottom of this pan is going to get pretty deep. Because um, okay. it's going to pull all the moisture out of the salmon and add to this. And we'll squeeze that lemon juice on there. And then we have grated beet. This is just okay. a medium beet. Goes in with all of this. Right. And then mix this with gloves because it will stain you, right? Oh, yes, it yeah, will. It, big time. It, it, I found it, out from experience. Yeah, it will not come out. Yeah. And we got a couple ounces of vodka. It doesn't have to be great goose or anything like that, but, you know, generally my rule of thumb is, is if you want to drink it, you shouldn't cook with it. All so, right. <laughs> I like that. It has to be that kind of quality. So um, then we're going to take all of this and mix it up. We need to make sure that that nitrite gets spread throughout the cure. Sure. Right. So that we don't have mixture. one part that's not cured. Yes. Okay. So, Got it. Like I said, this is this is really low salt. So that's that's why that's there. And then we're going to take this and we'll pack it on. Okay. Our fillets. And are those beets going to color those fillets? Yes, they will color it. They'll turn it purple. Okay. Um, and it's really beautiful when, the, when it's done and it slices really nice and pretty. You're going to have this nice, beautiful beet color at the top. And then as it fades down, it'll go to the salmon color oh, you know, towards the middle and then into the, the skin. Right. And then again, we're going to put plastic wrap on this. Okay. We're going to wait it and it's going to go in the refrigerator also for about 36 to 48 hours, somewhere right around there. So cool. we're doing the same yeah. thing with both of these, except different brines that we're putting. Yes. In. They've all both got salt. And they both got sugar, okay. which is necessary for the cure. Um, salt's it. hygroscopic, sugar's hygroscopic. It pulls that moisture out of the proteins. Mm -hmm. And so that you lower the water activity of the product, which prevents bacterial growth. Right. Well, I guess let's get these guys in the fridge. So last week we did the exact same brining process so we could have pre-brined salmon ready for this video. What should we look for when we've brined it? We put it in the refrigerator for 36 to 48 hours. 
we take it out, we soak it in water for 20 or 30 minutes, and then what do we do with it? What we're looking for is we want that flesh to be nice and firm. Okay. okay? You can see how nice and firm that is. Right. We're also looking for what's called a pellicle. It's a dried surface on the surface of the meat. When that comes out of the brine, we're gonna yep. soak it, rinse it, soak it, put it back in the refrigerator without being covered. And since it's not covered, you're going to get airflow. Okay. And that should dry. You know, right. I'm sure so. that people have seen a, you know, if you stick something in the refrigerator that's not covered, it ends up drying, right? Right. Because the cold air, the cold air doesn't carry a whole lot of moisture. And that will dry. It'll get this thin film over the top of it that looks wet. I mean, this is nice and right. shiny. It's glistening some of the, yeah, there. Some of the now oil. That you touched it. Yeah, yeah, that's the oil where I've touched it. But it's just the oil. Right. But there's no moisture there. Right? right. It's all nice and smooth. Smoke won't take if there's moisture. Okay. It's kind of that uh, oil and water thing. Right. right. Hydrophilic, hydrophobic. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is, is if you've got smoke and it hits that water covering and that's wet and there's water covering, it's going to hit the product, sit on the water and then just run off. And I'm sure that if you've done any like barbecue chicken, some, mm -hmm. a lot of people grill chicken, yep. you know, chicken legs and thighs. Sure. They put them on the grill. It's too hot. It starts melting the fat. It pulls that smoke up it lands on the chicken. The chicken's really wet because it didn't get dried before it got put on there. Mm -hmm. And then you get these black streaks on the outside of the chicken. And mm. it's kind of, it's bitter. It's just soot is all it is. Mm. It's just concentrated smoke and it's nasty. I see. So if it's gonna take smoke, it needs to be dry on the outside. Okay. So we pat it dry, put it on a, a trivet or something that's got air circulation capabilities, and then put it in the refrigerator and let that air dry. Okay, for that, about how long? That could take, it depends on the temperature of the refrigerator. Um, depends on how much moisture was on the surface. Sure. I mean, all that kind of stuff. And you pat it dry as best you can with paper towels, put it in the refrigerator. It's going to take anywhere from 24 to 36 hours okay. to be able to air dry and get a pellicle. Got it. So, so once the pellicle's formed, it's ready to go on the smoker. Yes, ready to go on the smoker. So we can take it like this. We actually, literally, we can slice this right now and take slices off of it and taste it. Mm. You know? And so before we put this on the smoker, we're going to do one extra thing. Yes. We're in Kentucky, so we're going to use bourbon. Obviously, yeah, clearly like, hey, the good stuff. So we're gonna take this, all right? We're gonna just put this good. onto a trivet. We're gonna take some bourbon, and like I said, you, if you're not gonna drink it, don't use it. So we're just gonna put some bourbon on here, right? I know we just said that if it's wet, it's not gonna right. take smoke, <laughs> right. right? But bourbon is, you know, this is 94 proof, so right. it's 45 percent alcohol somewhere around in there. That alcohol, once it gets into the smoker at a warmer temperature, right. you know, at room temperature, it's already starting to evaporate. I can smell it. Right. 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 So when it gets into the smoker at an even warmer temperature, 70, 75, 80 degrees, it's pretty much going to evaporate straight away, but it's going to leave that flavor behind. Right. And that's what we're looking for. So we're, we're going to flavor. OK, yeah. we're going to get that residual flavor, but then the dry surface again. Yes. So one thing I've learned from you is uh, Getting a dry surface on a lot of proteins is very important if you want yes. to build flavor, like searing yeah. a steak, yeah. uh -huh. dry off that surface. Yeah. So thanks for that, Chef. Yeah, it has, it has to be dry before it'll brown. Right. It's, you know, it's so, like wet wood. You can't light wet wood. Right. It's got to be dry. So, <laughs> Trust me, yeah. I, I know that one from experience. <laughs> but this one, uh, we can either cold smoke or hot smoke. Yes. All right. We're going to hot smoke today. Let's get our salmon and put it on the smoker. Cool. Awesome. There we go. So we're going to put all the salmon in the smoker, and then let's talk about how we're going to do it. The plan for the salmon is a hot smoke. So we're gonna be cooking at like 200 degrees. If we were doing cold smoking, it'd be completely different. But 200 degrees in there, try to burn a clean fire, build up good smoke flavor. And I'm not cooking really hot because I need enough time to build smoke flavor on the outside surface of that meat. If we were going 275, 300, the salmon would be cooked before there was enough time for the smoke to really penetrate and really provide good flavor. Now, if you're cold smoking, it's the exact same preparation, except you put it on the smoker and you're gonna put it in there at about 80 degrees, maybe 70 degrees. Basically as cold as you can get your smoker to still produce smoke. If I cold smoke salmon, I build a tiny little fire at the far end of the firebox with little twigs and allow it to smoke. And cold smoking, you break all of the rules of smoking. When you're smoking brisket, you're trying really hard to get clean smoke. When you're cold smoking, you actually want it to smolder and produce a lot of white smoke. Just like when you're smoking cheese, you're breaking all the rules, but trust me, if you do it, it's amazing. I tried some cold smoked salmon earlier and the flavor is incredible. It does not compare to the stuff you can buy at the store. Now for hot smoking, these bigger salmon pieces are gonna take probably 60 or 70 minutes. That little piece is gonna take maybe 45 minutes or so. Now if you're cold smoking, it's a completely different ball game. 
So you're talking about something like six to eight hours to cold smoke the bigger pieces and then about four hours to do the smaller piece. What you're really going for is just smoke flavor because if you heat it up too much, you'll start to coagulate the proteins and then you can't really get those good slices that you want. If you're cold smoking, you want your smoke to look like that. If you're hot smoking, you don't want that. Okay. All right. Thanks, chef. Mm -hmm. Hey, it does look like it has some smoke. Mm -hmm. Okay, these guys are done and they smell amazing. Let's get them inside and taste them. All right, we got the salmon inside now. We have two pieces of hot smoked salmon and then one piece of cold smoked salmon. And Chef is gonna show us kind of how to treat each one. So can you tell me about these accompaniments you have here? What we've got is just classical things that are gonna be served with a smoked salmon presentation. Sure. Uh, even caviar sometimes. Oh, right? really? Yeah, this is kind of the accompaniments come with a caviar presentation or something like that also. So they're just things that kind of help the flavors. Um, mm -hmm. For people who a lot of times just, I, I don't like fish, well, they'll put a lot of accompaniments on. Right. And then they'll put a piece of fish on there and they'll try it and they'll go, wow, that's not bad. You know, right. Kind of backdoors them in. Um, right. <laughs> so, so the flavors marry well together yeah, then? That's the yeah. point? Okay. So what we've got is we've got some sieved egg white. We've got some sieved egg yolk. Okay. And by sieved, what I mean is you take a hard boiled egg, hard -boiled egg and you know, we cook them for 10 minutes and then let them sit for a couple minutes and then ice them. So the yolks don't get that green on them. And then you take the, the whites, you put them in what we call just a regular sifter. Um, the reinforcements don't work nearly as well because the heavy mesh on the outside mm -hmm. prevents all that from coming off. Ah, so you lose a lot. So something like this works really well. And then you just use a rubber spatula and just press. Same way with the yolks. Yeah, same way okay. with the yolks. So what you end up with is these little kind of like very, very, very tiny spaghetti strands of, of egg white and egg yolk. We have capers, right, which are the unopened bud of a, a plant that's in the nasturtium family. What we have here is we just have herb mm -hmm. cream cheese, right? It's just cream cheese with salt and white pepper in it, so it's got some flavor, right, besides okay. just cream cheese. Sure. Um, and then underneath that, we've got toast points. And this is just, this could be any white bread. You could use sliced sandwich bread if you want, mm -hmm. right, which is exactly what this is. Okay. Um, you could use a French loaf. You could use, you know, a baguette. You just slice them across. Mm. Now with slice white bread you want to cut the crust off right and then cut them into triangles diagonal right okay. so that you and then you just toast them you can put them in the oven on 350 let them lightly toast on the out right. one side flip them over toast them on the other side it just makes that nice crunch right, right to go with something smooth right so, right. To, so to balance the texture yeah balances the texture okay and then this one of course I've, i just kind of put capers on some of these i put some uh sieved egg yolk on some of them so this then what we can do is just take and slice this and you're going to tell when this is done because it's, it's going to have some smoke color. Are you try one? Sure. Right. You do taste smoke on there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's really mm. good. If this was the cheap cut, yeah. I can't, I can't understand why. It's so good. It just so, kind of melts in your mouth. Mm-hmm. It's just like butter, really. I mean, it's nice. Yeah. Roll him up. Here we go. We can set that there. And you can just put that right on top. In some situations, if I was going to use something like a platter, mm -hmm. right, something like this, right, then I'm basically just going to take this and slice it down. And you'll see what I'm doing is I'm slicing down and then kind of gliding it along the skin, right, because the skin's still there. And that just kind of helps to get a beautiful slice. You can roll these up and put them on a platter. You can also just take this make some slices, kind of fold them over. There you go. And then this could go on a platter. Right. You just make you a nice little line or something. Now, if we're gonna present the hot, hot smoke, we can basically flake it. And you're gonna see when I try and slice this, it's not gonna be quite as smooth, right? But you can see how it flakes like a piece of cooked salmon would, okay? And then you just take that flake and it goes on top. Hmm. All right, you can try that. Will do. I'll grab the other one. Mm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. We've got great smoke. Wow. But we can That's take good. This. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then here, and you see this one's got a little different flavor. Right, this is the Russian one. Yeah, this is the Russian. Come on out of there. Man, that's tasty. Put that right there. Let me try that one. Sure. That one's going to taste, like I said, that one's going to taste just a little different. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. 
You know, I was thinking that putting it on the toast point with the cream cheese and stuff, that the smoke flavor wouldn't come through. Mm -hmm. It absolutely comes yes. through. Yes, it comes through. And this one, you can taste the background. Orange, right? lemon. You can get all of those other flavors back there in the background. Um, the smoke comes up on top. Yep. And then after that's been there for a minute on your palate, you start pulling out all the rest of it. So you, right. get, you get the spices, you get the lemon, yeah. you get the and, the, and that earthiness from the beet. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Wow. So, and then if I was going to put this on a platter, right, I would just take, trim that skin up just a little bit. We're going to take this whole thing. Right. Just set it there. And then you just put a fork. And you can just pick it with a fork, put okay. it on a toast point, put your garnish on it, walk right. away. Wow, that's great. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I was kind of intimidated about cold smoking salmon. I was afraid of botulism or listeria or any kind of bacteria. But thank you, chef, for teaching me how to do this because it is delicious. And I guarantee you, I'm going to do this many, many times in the future. Yeah. Both the hot and cold are wonderful. Different textures, but you still get smoke flavor. You get the, the fattiness of the fish more when it's cold smoked. It just kind of melts. And so with the hot smoked, you feel like you're eating a protein. So it's a different texture, but still the same kinds of great flavors in there. If you guys haven't tried doing this, 100% go and do it. I've cooked a lot of briskets. I've cooked a lot of pork butts. I've cooked a lot of pork ribs and beef ribs. You know, I've cooked tons of chicken, literally tons of chicken. But this is something I've never done. And it's so much more fun when you're trying something out for the first time and you get to taste it for the first time. That, that wow that you get, like when you try barbecue, like a perfect brisket for the first time, it kind of blows you away. This is that experience again for me. So I'd encourage you all to get out there. Big thanks to yeah. Chef Bell again. Thank get you. out there and try it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.